Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's a podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike, and today I'm joined with Landon Hansen64. Uh, you are a YouTube content creator, I believe, if I'm remembering your uh, profile correctly. You're, yeah. You describe yourself as like an internet historian and a commentator. Uh, Landon, how are you today? Good. I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm doing great. Um, so my go-to question that my audience knows is, I don't know if you've seen any of my episodes beforehand, but um, I usually like to lead in with, I know I gave you like a very brief introduction, but if you want to kind of expand on that a bit, explain in your own words what you do and what kind of motivates the content that you create. Yeah, so uh, yeah, as uh, you stated before, my uh, YouTube moniker is Landon Hansen 64 um sort of like a video game historian commentator i like to just talk about the video games that i love to death you know um i uh recently found youtube not fame i would say but i i've, I've garnered a lot of uh traction with uh these two specific horror videos that i made on like the playstation one horror and uh playstation 2 xbox nintendo stuff and ever since then i have just been uh addicted to training these videos you know i'm like always i'm just really churning out uh a lot of content for primarily me uh i i just i just find it really uh uh awesome compiling like writing editing uh scripting and every everything just i i find it to be a joy to make um but other than that yeah uh so far all i've endeavored in is just in uh youtube video essays but I do, I do think in some time in the future, I, I'd, I'd love to branch out into other aspects. But as of right now, this is what I'm doing. Right. And I think um, you've recently found, or I don't know how uh, how recently it's been for you, um, but you found like a lot of success, I think, with your first video discussing like PlayStation Horror. I, th I think that's yeah. like the one that you said was like the most prominent right now on your channel. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. Uh, yeah, that that video was just like, randomly just blew up on me i beforehand i had uh had made two previous videos um one was just a three minute video that was kind of just assembled in a day it's really it's not nothing all right but it was just kind of an idea and then the one after that was a large scale kind of documentary that i made about uh, obsidian entertainment and then randomly like i just had i was just in the moment uh playing a bunch of horror games and i was like you know i really want to make a video about this topic i did and my goal was to at least reach a thousand because if i remember correctly my uh obsidian entertainment video that reached at least 500 views and i was ecstatic about that but i was like if i can reach a thousand uh that's the goal for this video uh then i can branch out from there and it hit a thousand and it was like a snowball effect it just kept piling on piling on piling on and as of right now it's at a <laughs> 143,000 views on YouTube and that alone is, is just baffling to me. I have I have no idea It's, it's it kind of like shot me in the foot too because I just like If I knew that it was gonna get up that far I would have definitely polished it a lot more than I did but it, It's still insane regardless. I really uh, I just I, I every day I, not every day I, I think about like how that just happened and I, I'm, it's just like i'm trying to recapture it. i recaptured it once i haven't been able to do it again but uh i'm hoping it'll get there soon yeah and it, it's funny to me because um like that, that's not the video of yours that i actually found like that got me into your content it wasn't that one i think um it was one of your shorter form ones where you're talking about uh achievement hunting as a hobby yeah for you um and I find it like so interesting because uh, I I'm actually somebody that's kind of in like an opposite camp when it comes to like achievement hunting. I always, uh, I'm not as big of a fan of it. Like I, I think you right. know, gaming experience should, should stand like kind of outside of that. And, you know, not that I like hate it, but I never like want to go like out of my way to look for achievements. No, I get that. Um. So, and you kind of go over this in the video itself, but uh, I, I guess if you don't mind reiterating for me here, like for somebody like me who isn't into 
that type of achievement hunting I, i'm kind of curious like w w what is the sell for like if you want to encourage somebody to like oh you should really try this out in terms of like playing games like how would you like um like what's the pay like how would like sell me the concept of it you know right uh so the one thing that i really really appreciate about platinum trophies is that it's sort of representative of your love for the game it's my my first platinum trophy that i got was fallout 4 and i while i know that's not particularly the best fallout uh it's the one that i've played the most and it's not my favorite either i i think new vegas is my favorite but fallout 4 is the one i put the hours in the most and i just couldn't get enough of that game for whatever reason and it was it was sort of like a kind of like a bet that was going on between me and my brother. We both wanted to get the platinum trophy, so we both did it at the same time. And so not only was it like a shared experience with my brother, where we both play this game that we really, really, really enjoy, but it was also something to kind of prove our love towards this game and be like, yeah, this is what we are about. In another way, the platinum trophies, to me, or just the achievements in general, are also just ways to get the most bang out of your buck uh i i know a lot of people today play game to game to game to game you know they play game from start to finish uh move on and then that's it but with platinum trophies you are really really investing yourself into these worlds really investing yourself into the gameplay mechanics and really learning uh this game more intimately than you otherwise would have and for me that is that's some of the most interesting thing about these games to me um is just learning the little like intimate parts about it and really like diverging myself into the world and then slowly building up that 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 platinum trophy count so that way it's like i have fully divel diverged myself into like 21 games so far and i know in the platinum com in like the trophy community that's 20 is a bit but it's not quite a lot like i i aspire to be like up into like the hundreds like a bunch of other people are but uh i it's a real concept that just really really hammers in the idea that these are games that are truly special to me and i'm glad that i spent as much time as with them as i could and if i could platinum these games again i would honestly that's the that's the real gist of it to me all right i got you and I, yeah i remember back when on the xbox 360 days when you know i mean you, you talked about how you know before that there was kind of achievements in the form of like the atari badge system where you would like mail in your high score you get like some type of badge yeah um but i i mean i remember like the start of like it starting to become like a bigger thing during like the xbox 360 era um and like at that time they were like experimenting with the concept i remember like i think dead or alive had like i think something like negative achievements or something where it like take Here's... away from your gamer score or some weird thing like that oh my god that's awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean uh... for my life i'd be pissed if that happened to me but that's awesome <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I guess with that kind of experimental like idea in mind, in your opinion, what what are like some good practices for games in terms of um, designing achievements for players? Like, what do you what do you think like works the best in terms of like keeping players engaged and you know having to think of playing a game in a new way? Ooh, good question. So first and foremost, uh, so. When, when you say this, uh, the game that immediately comes to mind for me is the original Last of Us on PS3 and PS4. Uh, Last of Us and Last of Us Remastered. Uh, that game's trophy list is horrible. It's absolutely, it's, it's awful. And for those who don't know, um, the Last of Us trophy list has the regular base game attached to it. And that's, there's no problem with the base game by itself. The problem lies in the multiplayer trophies that are associated with it, where you need to put in a lot a lot a lot of time into the multiplayer alone and the multiplayer mode of the last of us i haven't played it myself i but i've heard it's really really good um it's just it, it wasn't as fleshed out as a regular multiplayer game should have been and the fact that you had to indulge so much time into it was absolutely ridiculous and it's the only i really want to platinum that game uh but i'm there's no way I'm, I'm doing the multiplayer mode for that so that that one's just kind of one i have to 
you know, like take it on the chin on. However, I, I do think uh, the Last of Us Part One remake uh, has has a different trophy list. That's that's just by itself. So that's uh, whenever I get to that game again, um, I can definitely platinum that one for sure. Another thing too is I wish games had more of a collectible tracker in in embedded into the game. Uh, where how am I gonna say this right? Uh. Sort of as just like a a tab where it's just like, hey, these were the ones that you missed um, and here's where you can find them. That would be nice. I don't necessarily want that for every single game because some games do require to be more difficult than others. Um, but I do think the way that some games manage collectibles can be very grating um, and annoying, especially if there's a million collectibles and some of them are missable. Uh, the, those are just awful and those require like countless playthroughs. Uh, other than that, I really can't say anything else to it. I do think that Platinum, tr I do think that the trophy lists as of late or for a couple of years now have just kind of been the same thing, you know, where it's like play through the original story. Then the story has, say, 12 chapters in it. So that's ch uh, 12 trophies for each individual tra chapter. Play the game on hard mode. Play the game, uh, collect all the items do this mini game do this mini game and i kind of wish trophies would get a little bit more out of that uh out of that bubble because it's just kind of like it's just expected now you know and well there's nothing wrong with that absolutely nothing wrong with that it's just uh i wish games had more were played more with the medium than it does and in my trophy video i explain how like some games do that you know the stanley parable has awesome trophies absolutely awesome trophy lists where it's like you gotta start the game and then 10 years from late from now like literally 10 years later you play the game again and then you get a trophy like i i love i love stuff like that and obviously not every game should do that i'm not <laughs> i don't want to be playing um you know final fantasy 7 rebirth for 13 years straight but it's uh those are the main problems i kind of have with it even though I'm totally fine with how developers want to make their trophies, so long as they don't make multiplayer trophies required for the Platinum, unless it's a multiplayer game. Right, yeah, and that, that makes sense. Um, I, I, I don't know, because I, I have a stupid idea on my mind. Um, do you think they'll ever, like, bring back, kind of, because, you know, we're, we're kind of in the talks of, like, Web.3 with, like, you know, NFTs and different, like, sort of online collectibles like that do you i mm. mean i don't know do you ever like have any type of speculation that um we'll see like uh like that type of integration with like achievements where it's like oh you we platinum in this game enjoy our nft uh i can see that being a thing in the future i'll have to be honest i'm not entirely all for the idea of nfts uh but if they're specifically just because of the money part, uh, the, the the spending money on just uh, digital digital collectibles like that doesn't appeal to me personally. If you want to do that to each their own. Um, but if they wanted to do something like that with the platinum trophy scene where you get an achievement and then that achievement then turns into an NFT, I'd be totally fine with that. Uh, so long as it doesn't cost me any money to do so. And in a way, you're kind of technically, you would technically kind of profit off of that if you were to sell it off, um, which that's appealing to me. Uh, I don't necessarily know if I would delve with that too much. I think uh, there was a little confusion here. I think it was like last year or like a couple of months ago, uh, PlayStation launched a new kind of uh, trophy system called PlayStation Stars, where you like enhance you enhance your like PlayStation level and then they give you digital collectibles. So if, say for instance, there's like the PlayStation one tech demo dinosaur that you can get, uh, or like the Astrobots, and they're just digital collectibles for playing a certain game during a certain month or collecting a certain trophy on a certain game. You get those digital collectibles and it's pretty awesome. It's a pretty awesome service, but it's not necessarily NFTs. Like a lot of people were thinking it was, However, I do think that it is kind of a step in that direction. I, I do believe that there's probably going to be something like that in the future. And I'm not entirely opposed to it so long as it's just not predatory or um, taking away the uh, 
the achievement system in any real meaningful way. I, as long as the achievement system we have today is still intact and it's not uh, messing up and this new NFT one doesn't mess up that, uh, I'm 100% totally fine with it. I think that's actually a pretty neat idea. Right, and I, I, I feel stupid because I don't want to like give anybody any bad ideas or anything. Like, <laughs> right. You know, like... But because I'm I, also not the biggest fan of like NFTs um, broadly, but, right? Uh, and like, you could, like someone could take that idea and just totally fuck everything up, dude. Like really mess things up. And I just like, yeah, that you you, you might have just planted a seed there. Who knows? We'll we'll have to see. I hope not. I mean, I mean to be fair though, it's not like it's completely unheard of. Like you have Steam with like um, what do they call it? Uh, they give you like little like picture things they could sell like on a market i, I can't remember the name are they it. are they like the cards yeah the cards yeah 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 those things are i just kind of completely ignored those <laughs> to be honest with you but yeah no i get what you mean yeah so it, it's not like it's something that would be completely unheard of but i, I don't know it, it remains to be seen because i know the temptation is going to be there right like, i just know it um but uh and I, I apologize for this scattered brain approach way to my interviews, but to kind of shift topics, I meant to ask you this earlier, but um, You're good. with, uh, I, I guess I'm kind of more curious in like a bit of your backstory before, because, you know, with YouTube, obviously I make this point several times on the show in that, you know, um, there's no like set career for doing something like this, you know, it's just kind of just something people approach sometimes people prefer, eh, sorry sometimes people approach it like kind of as a hobby some people approach it you know obviously more seriously because you know it's their job so mm -hmm. um i i guess i'm kind of curious like what what is your background in like you know before youtube what was your background in like video editing you know and just content creation broadly yeah so i like many other uh people my age uh kind of i wasn't necessarily raised on the internet uh early in my career i mean early in my life not my career uh i i sort of grew up with a lot of retro stuff uh by today's standards i didn't grow up uh with the internet per se i i had like the ps2 i had the ps3 but it wasn't connected to the internet and i uh sort of like you know had that childhood there and then when i went into the internet space i was introduced to this whole world of you know people playing games and making money off of it people talking about games and it absolutely blew my mind and i kind of you know i like a lot of other kids really really wanted to you know be a streamer be a youtuber be a let's player and do that and for a good period of time i was really trying to do that but that was in like middle school early high school and you know n none of that stuff really ever takes off uh so i always had an acute interest into it where it was from there that i started actually kind of learning how to do video making um i was looking up video editing software downloading it was using stuff and my first real editor was movies window uh was windows movie maker and you know as awful as that was it it did the job and i you know i edited real videos off that videos that are still up on youtube i think i'm not gonna say where but uh and i was really proud of myself for doing that and from there it was kind of i i just explored a bit i was trying other career stuff out until i got into my uh until i was able to take college classes through my high school where i could take video making classes and that was the thing that really really got me into the whole idea of I want to be a video maker. The initial idea I wanted to do was I want to be a filmmaker. I wanted to be a movie director. And well, that's still there. I still would love to do something like that. I think that's far, 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 far down the line. That's like a dream, if anything, to me. Uh, I that that was the plan. But then I started listening to video game industry podcasts. And that is what got me into the games industry at large and when i really started paying attention to the you know the business of the industry how sony microsoft nintendo and uh valve interact with each other how they interact with the wider um uh media business uh how games are made why games are made why games implement certain practices it really blew my mind and over the span of 
years i've i've kind of just been not only studying video making and like filmmaking but also studying the video game industry and that in turn is kind of like the perfect concoction for video essays and uh video creations and so the first foray that i did um was i had to make some assignments for classes and i made one that was loosely about gaming and i was like ah, i really like doing that it wasn't good enough to post so i just made other stuff and it was last year during uh oh wow it was like yeah almost a year ago today where i started working on this big project of mine called the history of obsidian entertainment where i detailed chronol uh my uh one of my favorite video game developers of all time and it was through that where i relentlessly edited relentlessly wrote relentlessly made it and i posted it and it was really really cool through there yeah i just started going off more and more building off uh what i had previously established and uh right now i'm about to graduate from the mass communications video editing stuff and yeah no i i i'm, I'm kind of taking my first few steps into the video game media uh industry at large so that's that's kind of where i stem from oh yeah and uh, congrats on all your success so far um thank you so uh so I, I guess I'm kind of curious then because um, I, I I always kind of wonder like since you're 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 still fairly early like in your career broadly especially with this YouTube stuff um, how far and I know this is like such a like thinking really far ahead but like how far do you think you can go with like talking about this like stuff like do you like what are your like more media plans for talking about video games and even like long term what where do you see your content growing as a creator no no yeah i'm glad you asked this uh because it's something i have thought of where um i like many other creators have thought what will there ever be a point where like i just run out of ideas with the stuff and uh, well, I don't necessarily think that's happened quite yet. There's been a few moments where I've thought about a video and it just doesn't come to fruition. I just can't make it out. And uh, through, uh, it's, it's it's a scary topic, but it's something that I haven't dealt with too much. Um, but long term, I, I, I do believe my videos, I, I feel myself getting better and better at editing every day, e every day. Like I'm learning more, I'm uh, doing more. I'm purposely going out and trying to learn new things. And with that, I, within the next uh, five years, I do think that I, I feel like my videos are going to get to a certain point where these, they're going to be really quality stuff, quality uh, content. And I'm excited for that. I'm excited for me to get to that point and I'm determined to get to that point after, but one thing that I really, really, really want to do, and this kind of correlates to uh, what I said before about being a movie director, is I think it would be absolutely awesome if I can get to the point where I can start making real video game documentaries, where I approach a studio and I'm like, hey, I want to document the creation of this game for you. And I want to be there during from pre-production all the way up until release. And I want to see this game unfold and I want to document it, make it a movie. Uh, and we've seen stuff like that. You know, there's the the God of War uh, documentary called Raising Kratos. There was another one with The Last of Us called uh, Grounded. But I want to get deeper into that. I want to get like real, real more deeper into uh, just how these developers are feeling, what their day to day life are, what their day to day life is, and how they interact with each other as a studio. Because making video games is very hard, very very hard. It's by far the hard. In many ways, it could be the hardest form of art or entertainment to make, and it is by far the most expensive. And I, that has to take a toll on you know your mental well-being as a creator, as a uh, just a you know a business person there, like a, as a coder, as a play, as a game designer, as a writer. And long, long term, I, I do believe that I, I I could fit the bill where I could document these video games being made, and. That's sort of where I want to take it um, far in the future, but that 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 relies on a lot of stuff. That relies on me blowing up more as a creator. That relies me on me getting more equipment for myself, 
like hiring a studio a set you know people to help me do this because that's obviously not a one man job and but maybe one day it could happen who knows yeah and uh kind of going on that like line of logic like you said before or, or like you you said that um a lot of people have done similar document like documentaries where um they explored the concept of following video game creation i i guess i'm kind of curious um uh, what would be unique about you like your take on it and how you would cover it mm, good question uh i don't know exactly quite yet because i am uh still not there i'm not at that point where i feel confident i could take on a project like that but um a part of me would want to take on the more like human moments of it the like the more like putting putting a face behind the development of the game you know i want to see i want to see what hideo kojima's uh thought process is like on this i want to see what uh if it's taking an emotional toll on him i want to see you know whether or not his um his underlings are happy with what he is doing you know and I think adding the more human side of video games could say a lot uh, and can do a lot for this industry because a lot of people really don't understand that there's there's so much going on with these games so much and you know game developers do way more than they should and people are still hounding them for not doing enough sometimes and while I know it feels that way because the industry standards are just getting more and more increasingly difficult uh, I think I think it's important to include the humanity within these games and within the de development of them. And I think I imagine that would be my slant to it. Um, of course, that can change in the future, depending on whether or not it happens or not. But that's uh, sort of the idea I have. Right. And I, I would also be very curious about the Hideo Kojima documentary because uh, I have... Uh lightly criticized kojima's work in my own podcast this was way before i did um interviews so i think i think that would definitely be a very interesting topic to get his perspective on certain things um yeah before we continue we have a word from today's sponsor salty llama uh hey landon yes have you ever had any issue with your laundry detergent or just your laundry in general uh yes <laughs> oh well I got the sponsor for you. Uh, today's episode is sponsored by Salty Llama. Are you tired of lugging around heavy bottles of detergent dealing with the mess of measuring the right amount? Introducing Salty Llama, the ultra-concentrated, hypoallergenic, toxins-free laundry detergent strips that are revolutionizing the industry. Their eco-friendly strips are easy to use. Just toss one in with your laundry and you're good to go. With Salty Llama, you can say goodbye to harsh chemicals and hello to cleaner, greener laundry experience. But it's not just good for the environment, it's also good for you and your family. Their hyperallergenic formula is gentle on sensitive skin, making it perfect for babies, kids, and adults with allergies. Don't just take my word for it. Give Salty Llama a try and see the difference for yourself. You'll be amazed at how powerful and effective their detergent strips are. Visit www.saltyllama.com and order yours today. And don't forget to use code PODCASTPASTA at checkout for a special discount. Again, that's uh, Salty Llama. Thank you so much for sponsoring the episode. Um, so, Landon... Uh, I think the the other video that uh, that uh, like I'm a fan of yours. I I guess I'm for some reason I'm a fan of like your shorter content only because um, and this is this just an issue with me. I see like something with like a long runtime and it's like oh man, I have to commit forty minutes to. Dude, no, I'm this. I'm on the same boat as you, honestly. <laughs> well, it, it's a stupid mentality to have because like I watch like television and stuff where I don't even think about it like. But I don't know, for some reason, like on YouTube, sometimes I find it harder. Um, right. But the other video I've been a, a he, like a fan of yours is um, the what your retrospective on like video game girlfriends and things like that. And uh, I believe if I remember correctly, you said at the end of that one, you want to kind of do kind of a um, follow up. Um, yeah, where you examined, I think uh, I, I'm I'm not sure exactly what you'd be examining in the follow up, but uh, basically this whole podcast is just a ruse for me to ask, where's the follow up to that? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's in the idea uh, pot. Believe me, uh, I just I I haven't gotten the the inspiration to do it quite yet. 
Um, but believe me, it is in the it is in the works. It's it's going to be on this channel for sure someday. I don't exactly know when. I haven't started it, but it's 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 always been on the precipice of my mind. Like I like I, I, I you'll get it soon. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, so right now is it's just you working on the channel by yourself, or do you receive any type of uh, like help at all? Um, so it is just me, but I do uh, cue my brothers into this. Um, I so recently I just launched uh, a series that I'm doing with my uh, older brother Cassidy, where we it's called interpreting, where we go and interpret a video game of each, uh, and just really delve into it. So we did a game on Bioshock. Um, we did a video on Bioshock, and that's a very that's a very deep game by itself, and. Uh, so he helped with that part um, where he came in, he talked about the game with me, and we really delved into the specifics of what the game was actually like. And uh, that, that video actually is missing a pretty uh, important part of it. So the, I, the idea of what interpreting was is I'd tackle the history and the development of the game. Then we go in and talk about the game itself. And then he talks about the philosophy and like the, the essentially the meaning of the game. You know, what does Bioshock mean? What is it trying to tell us? Uh, that video is missing that part. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what I was thinking at the time or whatever. I just really wanted to get it out and I kind of just posted it out like that. Um, but from here on out, we're going to be posting more. We're, we're going to be posting the, the complete uh thing and uh i guess there's a little teaser the next one is going to be bloodborne where you know i i tackle the history of bloodborne we talk about the game it's a very 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 it's a game we bond over quite a lot and then he's gonna delve into the deeper meaning of what bloodborne represents um so he helps me with that series specifically he also helped me with some of the script writing and uh some other various videos and then uh, i also have assistance from my little brother who helps me kind of um record uh certain aspects of it or he'll like proof proof watch my stuff he tells me what he does and doesn't like about it and so that way i can kind of get another pair of eyes on the project that i've been you know watching for like eight hours straight uh he he he's he's really important he um he kind of just uh tells me what i've been thinking but just didn't want to act on and just gives it to me straight other than that uh i do have some other friend uh help from my friends uh at school uh they were seen in the books to video games video they uh they also add like a you know a fresh perspective onto the video i'm watching offer uh, uh uh criticism and are also just really like you know idea hounds too they can uh, throw ideas out to me as well uh, other than that, everything is done by me. Uh, I write the video, I edit it, I post it, you know, I get it all out there. And yeah, uh, other than that, uh, there's really no help I've gotten uh, so far. I've considered um, hiring someone to do thumbnails, uh, but I, I just don't have the means or resources for that. Because I, I have to admit, my thumbnail game, it's good sometimes. It's good really uh, sometimes, but I just don't know what the fuck people want to click on. Uh and so I'm hoping that someone could help me with that uh, sometime down the line. But yeah, that's all I got. No, I actually, um, I was gonna, I was gonna lead up into like actually saying uh, that I, I personally really like your thumbnails because um, thank you. I don't know, I'm into that like whole kind of um, I don't know how you call it, like vaporware type aesthetic to them. I guess like with your logo and right. everything. Um, I can see that. Was that was that like the whole approach to it, or was it just you know by it's accident? Definitely stylized. Yeah. Um, I I kind of just uh, kind of like throw on what's like uh, when I open the Photoshop document document. I kind of just uh, throw on what I feel like, and it all kind of started with the PlayStation Revolutionized Horror video, where that thumbnail I was really especially proud of, and that's it. That thumbnail is largely the reason why that video got that big, in my opinion. I think I, th I just think people really enjoyed that, and from there, it's then that's when I kind of decided to base my work off of it. From there, uh, I tried other stuff. the The girls, the girlfriends, and video games, and the joys of trophy hunting. Those are not the ones that are on my channel now. Those are not the original thumbnails. The original thumbnails kind of sucked, uh, <laughs> and I got um some like outside perspective on that where they're like the reason why these videos aren't doing good is because the thumbnails aren't very good and i was like you're right i i just didn't want to admit it but you're right so i updated those ones 
and to kind of fit along the themes of my channel. I just kind of found a font that I really liked and just found an aesthetic that I felt was representative of the content I would want to make. And from there, I just kind of started going on. But thank you for the uh, thumbnail compliment. I, I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, no problem. Um, but damn, you had different thumbnails for them. Uh, kind of creating your own lost media, you know. Um, yeah. Just all around. <laughs> Are you a fan of lost media as, like a, as an internet historian? Or is that just the scene that you're really not, like, not too invested in? Uh, I'm just curious. Right. No, no, I've I've delved into it. Uh, not I I don't necessarily watch a whole bunch of stuff on it because part part of the reason why I don't really want to delve my get, go too deep into it is because I don't want to I don't want to pine for something that I'm just never gonna see in my life. You know, like I don't want to know that there was a lost fucking SquareSoft JRPG in the '90s that never released and I will never get to play it. I'm like, oh, that sucks. No, I want to play that. So. Uh, I'm I'm a fan of some of it. I do think it's really interesting. The you know like the weird, obscure like Nickelodeon TV shows that only aired once and nobody ever found, or just I I do believe that the pre preservation of media is important. So finding stuff like that is very very interesting. But uh, for me personally, I, I I'm not really too deep into it so much anymore. Right, I got you. No, um, for me, God, I've been looking everywhere i guess if anybody's listening that happens to also be like a lost media content creator like the odds of that i don't know i'm open to talking because um <laughs> like uh, I, I always like kind of one weird aspect of it for me is uh like there always kind of seems to be this weird existentialism to it you know like oh yeah when you, when you think about like all media one day is just going to be lost media so it's always like a battle you're losing more than winning, I think. Like as no, the it's, days pass, I I completely agree, dude. There's so much media every single day, and there's so much. Another thing too, there's so much good media coming out. Uh, like there's so many good movies that are out there. There's so many good TV shows, especially so many good video games that are great. Actually, I should say that like it's kind of ridiculous <laughs> how much is out there, and how and like how much is of that is just gonna be pushed into the wayside, you know. Uh, like we see this with, like, with uh, indie games specifically, where it's like there's a lot of great indie games out there, but they're just being pushed to the side because they're not getting as much uh, attention as they should be, you know. And ah, man, I, I I'm very very curious to see in the future how much of like the media turnout we get now is going to be lost media in like the future, you know. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and. Yeah, it's been kind of. Uh, I I know people that have like actually like done video essays talking about this concept that like you know we're kind of in this phase where we're seeing like like people are actually feeling like yeah I can't keep up with everything that's coming out because you know with the rise in subscription services and streaming there always has to be like something keeping you back to service so you keep paying yes. like the, yeah the monthly subscription and things like that. And yeah, you kind of gotta like pick your poison with it, honestly. Yeah, it, it's it's a very, I think it's a very, like, tough situation, and, you know, it, that goes into, like, its own problems where, like, you know, people don't feel as united in talking about media anymore. Um, it's, it's like, its own whole, it's, like, its own beast of, like, a topic to discuss. Um, yeah. But, um... Yeah, so you, you were mentioning I don't I don't know how much insight you really have in, in into like this necessarily, but you you were ju you just mentioned like this idea of like a lot of indie games like kind of struggling to get visibility visibility like in this modern market. Um, are do you have any like take on like how to like fix that problem, or do you think it's just something that's always going to exist, especially as you know? Um, you know, we we just see this large influx of like games being released. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I I don't necessarily know how it could be fixed. I have I, but I do want to see it change. Is so for a good while there. Uh, I don't know if you know anything about this, but on the PlayStation Store specifically, there was a shit ton of these just piece of shit games it was called like jumping taco where you press the x button only once and then like that's it and it cost like a dollar and like 59 cents and it absolutely ravaged the the playstation store you look at like new new games on the store and it, it was just shit like that jumping sushi jumping taco jumping burger and it was uh 
that stuff, it, which totally, totally, totally overshadowed the good indie games out there. Um, I, I do, I do think Sony has uh, taken, uh, you know, uh, steps to, you know, prevent uh, some of that, you know, uh, shovelware shit out of there. But I, I also think that people just also need to kind of delve into indie games more as a, as a, you know, as a, as a hobby. Uh, I I I get it. I really really love my AAA games. Do not get me wrong, and I do find myself playing the more AAA games. Um, I do find myself playing more AAA games than I do indie games most of the time. But that's just they're primarily just games that I want to keep up with, uh, or just games that I want to you know platinum or uh, engage more with. And I think me personally, I need to get into more indie games. But uh, as for a way to people for games to get more notoriety or just to be out there more i do think that companies like you know valve microsoft or playstation could honestly it would do them a lot to reach out to these games and then make them you know second party exclusives or make them you know have like yeah xbox is really 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 for this game and push it into the forefront and they've done stuff like that but i think they could do it more honestly especially with microsoft and the way that they've been handling their triple a games which they're not there <laughs> you know they're just not there like halo infinite that was it and then halo infinite even kind of took a dip uh so if you know microsoft were to it is kind of what they're doing uh, in a way too but except with more uh prevalent developers but if they were to take the real indie darlings the real guys just the the fu the fucking uh three teens in a in the basement making a single game for themselves if they were to take a special game from them and then boost it up to the likes of like a very popular uh game like a very like up to the standards of like the next gears of war that would be awesome and that would do a lot for not only the gaming industry but for just the smaller uh broader like uh video game developer um and we see it each and every day uh but games are getting exceedingly more difficult and exceedingly more expensive to develop for and it's getting to the point where now we're like, if a game is going to, if a large AAA game is going to enter development today, it's not going to come out until maybe PlayStation 6 at the very earliest, which is insane. Absolutely insane. Um, and we're reaching to, uh, we're reaching a stagnant point where with that we, those AAA games can't flourish as much as they should, you know? So if indie games were to, sort of pick up the slack with that or even just smaller titles um the callisto protocol is a good example of this where it's just a small five to twelve hour game and that's it you know it's just a small i'm not going to say it was an entirely quality experience i still have yet to play it and i heard that there were some things about it but those are the games that we need to support in order to um breathe life into our industry again because yeah we're not gonna a lot of, I, game developers they're it's it's gonna take a lot and we're not gonna see them for a very very long time so if people were to focus more on indies or even just the smaller titles like callisto protocol um we'll be in a better space uh yeah yeah we'll be in a better space that's what i think well yeah and I, I'm, I'm very hopeful that uh you know we 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 do kind of see the this shift hopefully in at least a better focus on indie games yeah. um so i i guess since i have you here i i'm curious what is like currently your hottest video game take like either individual game or like an industry right trend what's what do what, what do you think your spiciest take currently mm okay good take uh, I got to think about this one for a second. Just give me a moment. Let me think. Uh, and go here. Oh, by the way, we are rocking it in Click Apocalypse too. <laughs> our our oh, old party. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, for. <laughs> For my listeners, uh, I'm I'm incorporating like uh, video podcasts, so um, I think I, I don't know how it works on Spotify. I'm still like experimenting with this feature, but you have an option to watch this. It's like a video podcast, and right now, uh, 
where I'm doing like a just a quick playthrough of Click Apocalypse. Uh, it's supposed to be on like YouTube, just like this video format. But yeah, we're doing pretty well, and you know, I mean, it's an incremental game. It's not like I can lose necessarily, but you know. Yeah, I think I got one. I think I got one, and it kind of oh. correlates to what we just talked about. Yeah, yeah, earlier. Cool. But I do think that um, AAA games uh, need to be smaller. I think they don't need to be bigger uh, than they are now. And largely, I think that's because I think a lot of AAA games have a lot of fat on them, and we can trim the fat and put them into different places. Uh, I'd rather, you know... Let me think. So, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, I'm, I'm currently making a video about this right now, actually, but one of the reasons why that game took so long to remake is because of how much time and effort it would have taken to remake something like that up to the standards of a modern AAA game um and we see that you know final fantasy 7 remake is awesome it's a really 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 wonderful game but it has a lot of fat on it there's a lot of shitty side quests in there that just don't need to be there um and if they were to you know focus their their sights on to just making it a more smaller bite-sized game and not a full-fledged rpg that is just to take place in only midgar i think that game would fare a lot better and i think a lot of games would fare a lot better like that Horizon, uh, you know, checkbox games like Horizon or even uh, Hogwarts Legacy or something like that. Checkbox games serve a purpose, and uh, I'm glad that they there are there sometimes, but I would prefer much, much, much more streamlined games, much more linear games, and a lot less open world stuff. Uh, with linear games, we can add more detail, we can add more uh, bigger set pieces, and... It, it would offer it would stand to offer that, you know, a lot more memorable stories would be taking place now today, you know, like. God, fucking. New IP within video games is like it kind of just shines and then it goes away and then we're back to remaking or remastering something old again, you know, uh, like Dead Space remake fucking terrific, but. A remake, really, <laughs> like, uh, you know, if if games were to be more streamlined linear experiences with more memorable set pieces more memorable characters more memorable this and that uh we would see a lot more new ip today genuinely i i i think so for sure so that's that's my hot take is i love open worlds games but tone it down a bit <laughs> right now i got you I, I, I was having kind of like a similar idea where um like the other day I was thinking of like this whole trend of making like a game as, as a service, you know, where it's something that you're like, just, it feels like you're just constantly playing it because like they keep pushing like updates, like, Oh, a new event, like for this or a new event for that. And, um, I also just recently beat, um, Plague Tale too. I don't know if you've played the Plague Tale series at all. Uh, I, I started the first one. I didn't finish it though. Unfortunately I do. I do want to at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Great series. Um, and I, and I beat two and I don't want to spoil anything because I don't want to put this, you know, I don't want to put the tag on my video. I'm just, I'm just laziness, I guess. Yeah. Um, but like a significant event happens. Well, a few significant events happens in the second one. And, um, I, I got this weird thing and I mean, again, I know I'm not the only one that's like thought this or talked about this, but like. I've had that experience like stick with me more than like a lot of like, you know, games as a service that I'm playing right now have, right? Like in terms of just like how much headspace it's taken my mind thinking about like what's happened. And I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think there, there is like, I mean, I get it from like a business standpoint. It's, there's not really, you know, it, it's harder to sell like those just like one and done experiences the players mm -hmm. um it is especially if they're not replayable especially if they're not replayable yeah like exactly that. and i mean don't get me wrong like plague tale 2 has this replayability but you know it it's never going to compete with like you know um let's say fortnite that always has like an event going on or something like that yeah and i don't know it's just it, it's it's very like i guess kind of tough i don't want to sound like a boomer because you know i i don't hate those you know like a game that's like always active always has a community but i i think there is kind of an art in like just like the smaller experiences that are just like okay it's just straightforward like you're experiencing Definitely. the story and that's it yeah yeah no i i 100 percent agree um so you said you're also into filmmaking 
right? Yeah. And since, well, that's how I started my channel, basically, was in talking about film, television, you know, visual media in general. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm curious, would you ever expand on that in your uh, YouTube channel, like talking about topics related to like film and such? Yes, uh, I actually, I do want to kind of broad, uh, broaden down a bit and talk about more topics other than just video games. Um, my primary focus is video games, uh, but I would love to do a video uh, specifically with the interpreting series. I would love to, instead of just doing a video game, we tackle a a movie you know i detail how a movie came to fruition we talk about the movie our favorite experiences from it our favorite scenes blah 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 and then you know tackle what the movie was really about and definitely i definitely 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 want to get into uh, movies i also have been thinking about getting into music as well uh, i have some uh music related video essays that i i, I think i want to capitalize on as well but uh that's in the future and i i think uh, Although the music one, I think you might see a little bit sooner than the film related side. Right. Um, and I, and you know, uh, I apologize if you don't have these uh, like ideas in your head right now, but, um, did, did, can you like tease like my audience and to some degree, I guess your audience into what those, um, what that, what that you might be covering with that? Yeah. So, um some of my i'll start with the music one some of my favorite artists i've been listening to right now one of them specifically is de la soul they were a, a 90s rap group that started uh really started in 1989 um but i want to i want to make a video about them detailing how they how they came to fruition and why they're so important today and why well, we kind of tell them away, them. right yeah just yeah. recently oh, and man. god i felt yeah. awful about that because <laughs> So Trugoy, uh, who's who's, um, I think he went by Dave later uh, in the in their life cycle. But uh, one of the I, I had the idea for this video way before he passed away, and a part of me kind of feels a little bad because I I wanted to capitalize off of them releasing their music in March. I don't want to capitalize off this guy dying though. You know, like I feel like if I put out a video now talking about that, it, it's a little insensitive, but. Um, it's also kind of paying respects in a way too. I don't know, but yeah, no, awful, awful to hear about that. He was really, really talented. Uh, for for those of you who might not know who this is, you might, you definitely probably know the song "Feel Good Inc." by uh, Gorillaz, and he he's he's the the rapper on that, responsible for one of the most uh, popular rap verses ever created. So, real talent. R.I.P. Died way too young, fifty. That's not that young at all. But um, other than that uh i do I, th I can't necessarily say what kind of movies we'd want to do i can say a few of my favorite movies that i would like to get to eventually you know like uh, edgar wright films like scott pilgrim uh Shaun of the dead and other things like that uh my brother and i are also a big fan of the movie the lighthouse from uh, robert eggers um i think that'd be a wonderful movie to tackle uh regarding its like you know development and what it's actually trying to say uh but yeah that's all like that's all i got so far would you be worried, like, um, would you, uh, like, uh, with that series, I, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm not as familiar with it I'm on your You're end. Good. Is, it, is it like a video series or is it like a podcast? Because I think you also do a podcast, right? Yeah. So it's a, the interpreting series is a video essay slash podcast series. So it's, it's both kind of hammered in one and it, that, that requires it to be very long form content, but long form content right now is kind of killing it on YouTube. So, uh, as for right now, that, that seems to be like the good sweet spot for it. Um, I have other plans for that series in the future too, uh, to make it more a little bit more streamlined because I know that is a lot to tackle watching a history video, a podcast, and a philosophy of video all in the same go, but that's kind of what the package is at the same time. Right, right, I got you. Um, because uh, I was going to ask, like, you know, I've talked to like a few other content creators that cover like films. Um, are, are you worried about like, uh, what's the YouTube system called for that where they like flag stuff for copyright uh, I don't know if it's just like copyright system are, are you worried yeah. about that with the approaching that type of content definitely especially with the music um because I, I, I find it hard to really talk about a artist without really um indulging into their creation you know like video games you talk about video games and you can show 
you can show what the video game looks like and then you can play a song from the video game and to show what it hears like and so it's, you can kind of get a general idea of what this the video game is going to be with music it's purely auditory um and th th there's some visual aspects to it obviously especially nowadays but uh definitely with the music side i'm scared with that and definitely with the movie side because i i can't just put up the fucking movie on there but if there's specific things i need to talk about you know that need to be up there i can put them up there and that's that's within the fair use fair use but uh it's definitely a fear but i i guess i'll i guess i'll cross that bridge when i, when I get to it yeah definitely and i mean you know they say it's fair use until it's not and then oh, yeah no. What are you gonna do? Um. So, and so I, I, I guess I, I am curious because I think uh, you've covered like Resident Evil, obviously, it, it to some degree. I don't know if you, I don't think you did like a direct retrospective, but obviously, in covering like PlayStation Horror, you've had to cover Resident Evil, mm -hmm. and uh, to kind of add a bit of timeliness to um my content here uh next month we're getting uh the remake to resident evil 4 yes um so i i guess i was kind of curious about your perspective and again i apologize if you kind of covered this um in your video but um okay so clearly like resident evil is like you know beloved game and i i get it yeah it's it's fun i play it myself very fun um mm -hmm. and i get why it's like appreciated in the way that it is but um I know, obviously, then there's the divide into Resident Evil 5, where a lot of people said, oh, that's where, like, the series kind of fell off. It got too, like, action-oriented, too, like, goofy, and that always kind of confused me because, like, a lot of that stuff you see in 5 was also in 4 to some degree, right? With, yeah. like, you know, the cheesy one-liners, um, kind of the more sillier action pieces where, you know, at the moment it felt really tense, but, like, in retrospect, like a statue was chasing me like wh what's going on here <laughs> right would um, everybody go bingo <laughs> yeah exactly so i i guess i'm i i i never quite understand like what was the tipping point as i imagine you play both games what was the tipping point for like five where like okay now it's too ridiculous where like four it worked fine yeah i i don't necessarily know uh, I think with four, it, the seeds were set for you know like the more action-focused coolness that was associated with Resident Evil. That's especially seen with the movies too. Um, but it kind of fit within that game for some reason, and I think that a lot of has a lot of it has to do with people just love Leon. People love the character Leon. I love Leon. He's so, especially in that game, he's so interesting uh, <laughs> with the way he has those cheesy one-liners. How he became this, you know, secret agent for the president, and I don't exactly know why it just doesn't kind of work to the same effect with Resident Evil Five, and I have to imagine it just has something to do with like the the characterization of Chris, um, uh, Shiva, and just the overall design philosophy of that game. Um, I, I I do think a lot of people need to give more credit to resident evil 4 being the main catalyst for uh the series to tip over into the action uh side of it and i think a lot of people also need to realize that just because resident evil 4 is going to the action direction doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be bad in any way um it just doesn't mean that they're going to be survival horror games which is fine you know as long as we still as long as we can still get survival horror games and then get the action games that's totally fine with me um as to what resident evil 5 did specifically i just think it got a little too deep into the into the campiness with it like chris punching a boulder is fucking absurd and i love but it, it but it as that's... absurd as getting staced by like chased by a statue like i, I don't know i don't know it's sorry, sorry no I, you're good no you you bring up a good point it's kind of yeah it, i mean i guess listen Resident Evil 4 getting chased by a statue, that's that's a little crazy, but you know, we're all we already knew we already like suspensed our we already suspended our disbelief for this game because, you know, the fucking parasites are like excreting out of these guys' heads and then, you know, it's it's a big castle in the middle of Spain and this tiny Napoleon guy is just, you know, fucking around or whatever. That's fun. And I guess a statue contraption can kind of do that. 
But there's no fucking way on God's earth Chris is going to punch a boulder into a volcano. <laughs> you know, that's like a little too far, but I'm totally fine with that. Really, I'm totally fine with him doing that. And I, I, I just think people wanted a survival horror game around that time. And then that's, that's why the game kind of fell off. Uh, that game, that's why people kind of hound that game for being too crazy, I think. Um, even though that game is still good in its own right, genuinely. Like, it's it's not a bad game at all. I, I have to admit, it's been a while since I played it, but... Uh, that... I, I can't offer an answer to that, but I, I, I think I think I can kind of figure out, like, uh, the lines which people say that. Right, yeah, it's, it, it does... I, th- I think it is kind of all arbitrary. Um... But I guess since I do have somebody who is a fan of the Resident Evil games, um, obviously with like in terms of like the mainline series outside of the remakes, we're seeing kind of this venture into like uh, first person action, with the exception of eight, where you could kind of switch to like you know, um, yeah, like the third person mode or whatever. But that was introduced later. Uh, I I guess just in terms of like broader trends, like with the change of perspective and like kind of this somewhat return to like the more like horror aspects of it like well, what's your take as like a longtime fan that's kind of followed uh the series throughout yeah so i think i think it's good um i do like the third person aspect uh the the how they added third person into resident evil 8 because i do think resident evil lives and breathes in third person um but Resident Evil Seven introducing the first person aspect of that it was wonderful, in my opinion. It's it's it, it's just it was a different take, and the series needed to go in a different place. And I I think first person was the right thing to do. Um, but now that they're giving you the option to go first and third person minus seven, I think that's awesome. And it's it's exactly what the players wanted. It's it's you know they wanted horror. They wanted um, something a little bit more. Yeah, they just they just wanted horror. They wanted Resident Evil to go back to scaring the shit out of them. They wanted stress. They wanted to feel tense playing this game rather than, you know, just it being fun, like, you know, bashing a few zombies heads in. And it's so while it retains being fun, it retains also being in, like entirely stressful at the same time. So I think uh yeah, I think the direction Resident Evil is going in now is wonderful. I only hope that they can continue to uh produce quality content out of it um i have to admit i haven't played eight quite yet um uh but i assume that they're going to be taking it further than that and i I assume this is not the last time we're seeing resident evil in first person so that's that's kind of what i gotta say yeah fair enough fair enough um i guess uh we're getting close to like the hour mark here i don't want to keep you too long uh let me end on one kind of a question uh I, I guess I'm just curious, like, broadly, um, what games are we looking forward to, like, not only now, but in the more, like, immediate, or, like, in, you know, in the further horizon? Like, what, what game releases are you looking forward to? Oh, man, so many. So, um, I, I gotta say the most recent one, obviously, Resident Evil 4 Remake, uh, just, uh, just looks absolutely wonderful. I can't wait to go back into that game uh, with a new, new lens. Um, but ostensibly, this year is going to be fucking packed to the brim. I have to say, aside from Resident Evil 4, my most anticipated game for this year is uh, Final Fantasy 16, which looks wonderful. Um, and beyond that, you know, Spider-Man 2. Uh, I, I love the first Spider-Man game, but that, that's, a, that's an easy pick. Uh, the sequel to Jedi Fallen Order also looks really good, but I haven't seen too much of it because I kind of want to go into that game blind. Um, but largely, the most... The one thing I'm pining for that's not even confirmed yet, that's not even like it's way off into the distance, is I just want to see something new with Fallout. Fallout, I think, is my all-time favorite video game series of all time, and it's surprisingly I've rarely talked about it on my channel, but um, I think it's safe to say sometime in the future we are going to be seeing a new Fallout-related spinoff or uh, you know remaster, maybe even a remake of some sort within the near future, and I hope to see that. I hope to see that soon. But uh, other than that, those those are probably my most anticipated games. Um, and then, you know, ostensibly Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the sequel to remake. Uh, really, really excited for. And yeah, that, that's 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 all I got. 
Yeah, but man, with Fallout, they have to. I really hope that they update the engine eventually, right? Because they're oh still my using God. Like, the old one. <laughs> yes, it's it's insane. Because sorry, Starfield. We get, we're getting Starfield out, and Starfield looks really good too. And I'm 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 actually pretty excited for Starfield as well. But I'm just not nearly as excited as I would be if it were, say, you know, Fallout or you know, the next Elder Scrolls. Um, and then after Starfield, they're going into Elder Scrolls Six, which you know deserves a game. That that's the sequel to Skyrim. Like that, of course, that's going to be big. But I don't even think that game is remotely close to done. Remotely. And and then Bethesda, like like a while ago, had the audace, audacity to say, "Yeah, we're working on Fallout Six after Elder Scrolls Six. And that's just like, oh my. I mean, Fallout 5 after Elder Scrolls 6, and that's like, oh my god, dude, you guys how fucking far in the future that is? That is insane. So, at some point, at some point, you know, Obsidian has gone on record stating that they, they're they they're ready for, they, they would love to make a new uh, Fallout game. Uh, you know, Fyrkis Urquhart, the CEO of Obsidian, says that that's, that's like, the, like, one of the last things on his bucket list, is to just wake one more Fallout game. So, I got a feeling that at some point in the future, we're going to see... Uh, a Fallout related spinoff in some capacity, but I got a feeling it's going to be a very, very, very long time before we see Fallout 5. And if it still has that engine, so help me God, I, I don't You're even right. know. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> um, well, yeah, yeah, I'm, cer- I'm certainly very curious about what, how they'll approach that. Um, but yeah, we are, we're a little bit past the hour mark, but not to worry. Uh, for all my listeners, and I guess watchers now, because, you know, I have the video form here. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. If you want to support the podcast, you could do so in a number of different ways. Uh, if you want to do like a one-time donation, I have a Ko-Fi account um, that you do like also monthly donation um, option, but I don't encourage that because I encourage people to use my Patreon because with Patreon, you have different tiers uh, in which you could get like a basic tier. Any of the tiers gets like your names, your name read at the end of the credits here, but no, don't have any patrons, so nothing here uh, i think there's also like exclusive merch there that you, you know with a monthly subscription um, i think you have to like stay like three months for a thing it's it's not what i wanted to do but you know it is what it is um so yeah you, i have ko-fi i have patreon i also have a merch store where uh you know you could buy like shirts mugs uh i think sweaters you know what have you uh had that updated with the new logo design um all this uh is linked on my twitter i finally formulated all my links together into link tree so you click on the link tree and it should all be listed there along with like um, the link to the newly formed youtube channel so hopefully this will be the first episode on youtube barring any like issues um landon thank you so much for joining us today uh if you want to go ahead and shout out where people can find your content where people can find you yeah, so um, I'm uh, as stated before, Landon Hanson sixty four on YouTube. You can find me there. I have a Twitter, which is at Landon's Boredom, uh, and then I also have an Instagram, which is just my name with an extra N attached to each uh, name, respectively. The whatever. Uh, so you can find me there. Uh, uh, more content to be on the way here soon, hopefully. Um, but thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. Really, it was it was really really great. So thank you. Oh yeah, thanks for being on. Um, shout out one more time to uh, Salty Llama again. The promo code is Podcast Pasta, all capitalized. I don't know if it really matters for their website, but yeah, you'll get like a nice discount with that. Um, but yeah, that's gonna do it from us. Uh, take care, everyone. Bye.